We grew up believing that dreams were more complex than they really are. We always thought that dreams depended on your background, from place to place, or what your goal is to see out of life. And yes, all those factors do play in. But dreams are things that seem out of reach, something one can strive for. Almost everyone wants to do something that they love, something that is fulfilling, and something that would make them happy. So basically, dreams are the same regardless from where you are or where you come from. Hi, my name is Nikki Jagged, and I'm 15 years old. And I'm Maya Mora, and I'm 14 years old, and we are both ninth graders. In the sixth grade, I went on a service trip through a youth-led nonprofit organization called Techo to a city in Colombia called Cartagena, where we built houses for people that really needed them. When I got back, things seemed different, and I knew I immediately wanted to take action. So Nikki and I raised enough money, and by the eighth grade, we were able to go on another service trip, but this time to the Dominican Republic. Remember, Nick, there was no running water or electricity in the community we were in. And there was no internet. Can you imagine? And regardless, everyone was lively and fun. We built two houses, one which was for a family of five, the mother Alejandra, father, and their three kids, Riley, Justin, and Alexis. We wouldn't have been able to do it without their help. Yeah, the house the family lived in was not fit for them at all. It was a dark, tiny room with holes in the roof, and they had a mattress on the ground that they all had to share, right across from their kitchen. But by the end of the two days, we were able to build them a transitional house by the community members and the volunteers. Now the house is durable and will allow the family to focus on other things, such as work, their children's health, education, and above all, their dreams. We did spend a lot of time with the kids. They all varied in ages from about four years old to some that were our own age. We bonded, and we played, and we talked. But we did remember our thoughts before coming, that the kids' dreams who live in the Dominican Republic, in the community we were in, might differ from ours due to different circumstances. So we asked. Here is a video on the kids' dreams of the community we were in. What are your dreams? Bombero. Bombero. Let's go. Bombero. Bombero. And you? Architect. Architect. And you? I want to live in a house. I want to live in an apartment. I want to live in an apartment. A car. A car. A big house. A big house. A big house. Alexis says he wants a car. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nikki, but what little boy from anywhere doesn't want a car? So the kids' videos, the kids videos in their dreams go by the simple dream guideline we set forth at the start of the talk. They all want something for the future. Now let's take a look at another video, but these kids are from all over Miami. My dreams are to, to be a, a brain surgeon, to have a handsome husband, to, one kid, Five dogs, three cats, and one bird. My dreams are to be a vet or a singer or a model. My dream is to be a CEO of a big company and having at least two kids. My dream is to be a lawyer or comedian. <laughs> My dream is to be a teacher. Okay, my dream is to be a policeman or Jedi. <laughs> my dreams are to build a Lego city. My dream is to be a professional horseback rider when I grow up. My dream is to be a chef when I grow up. My dream is to become a model and a fashion designer. The two separate sets of kids are all roughly the same age, the only difference being where they come from. Regardless of the evident privileges of living in a city filled with opportunity in a slum in the Dominican Republic, their dreams are the same, both striving for something that they see in the future, something that makes them happy. On the other hand, we asked Alejandra, Riley, Justin, and Alexis's mom, to see what her dreams are. 
We thought that her dreams would revolve more around their economic cir circumstances, much more than a parent in, in Miami who, for example, has certain things guaranteed, which makes things a little bit easier. Such as water. Water is always available here because we have a clean running water system and public water fountains. And free education because public schools are required by law. And food stamps, shelters, and many other programs opposed to the remote place we were in in the Dominican Republic. Now here's Alejandra's video, the mother of Riley, Justin, and Alexis, telling us what her dreams are. Where are you going to make them? Parte de mi sueño era por lo menos eso, la construcción, y gracias a Dios que de me han traído de verdad este proyecto. Para mí esto era un sueño, yo poder tener la casa más organizada, porque mira ya la condición en que estamos. Entonces yo quería que estuviera por lo menos un poquito mejor, para que mis hijos y yo estuviéramos más cómodos. Y ese es parte de mi sueño, tener mi casa más organizada, lo que los niños necesitan. Y... Me encanta. Eso. Amable. Tú sabes que lo... Por lo menos ya esto, gracias a Dios primero y a ustedes. Por lo menos ya, ya mi sueño va poquito a poquito ya cumpliéndose. She has stressful circumstances on her plate that keep her occupied daily. These circumstances make it so she's not focused on long-term dreams, but instead focusing on making the most of what she has now. Her dream for her and her family, she said, was being accomplished little by little. But ultimately, she just wants what is best for her kids, for their health, education, comfort, and of course, their happiness. We feel as if any loving parent would want this for their kids, no matter where they live, come from, or what they have. We did the same thing as for the kids in Miami and asked some parents from around Miami to see if their dreams differed or followed our simple dream guideline. My dream is simple. I want my kids to be happy, and I want to be able to provide for them so they can be better and good to this world. My dream is to leave better children for this world. My dream was actually to be living this dream that I'm living now, which is uh, I am uh, an immigrant, I immigrant. I left my country, I left Brazil, and I had this dream that I could live in a different country and I could have my family and I could have my house and be a great mom. My dream is to bring my kids to America so we can be together and give them good education for a better future. I have two babies and I dream that they're going to grow up in a, in a really good world. I hope that things in this world will change. Um, there'll be peace, there'll be equality, there'll be people that love each other and care about each other. At the end of the day, both parents, whether from the Dominican Republic or in Miami, have similar dreams. Yes, there are huge economic factors affecting their dreams. However, this boundary does not stop them from being similar. And that's when it dawned on us that we are all truly compassionate about similar problems. Because when we got there, we did this exercise with a ball of string and realized that we all have similar dreams for the future. Yeah, I remember when we got there, we did this exercise with some of the residents in the community and immediately bonded. We, the volunteers, along with the community members, were in a circle and had a ball of blue yarn. The point of the exercise was to name something about society that bothered you, that you often dream about, and then pass the ball string to someone else. I remember the first person said it was not fair that not everyone could have a proper education. Oh, someone else said that they dreamed to see a hunger-free world. And by far, the most common dreams people had were to fix the corrupt government and inadequate housing. And it went on from there. Dream after dream was said, and soon we had this big web of blue yarn in the middle of us. That seemed impossible to untangle. But then the next part of the exercise was to say a possible way to make this dream of yours become a reality. Opening up small schools and communities is a possible solution for lack of education in, unfortunately, way too many places. Someone said that a small step that could be taken to end world hunger is for people to set up local farms and gardens within communities that really need them. People said their creative ways after ways, and eventually the yarn was gone and back into its little ball form. We are all very different, yet we came together and had similar dreams for the future. And there were only about 15 people in that circle. 15 dreams were said, and all 15 dreams had a way to make them come true. 
There are about 1,100 people in this auditorium at this very moment. Imagine how many problems we could solve together. How many dreams we can make a reality together. So, after going on this brief trip, Maya and I have a newfound perspective on the world. We thought that the new people we were set out to meet would have different dreams due to their perspectives and our perspectives, their culture and our culture, their community and our community. Yet, no matter how different we all are or where we come from, we all have the ability to dream. They all follow the same pattern, that of which we all strive for something in the future. After all, do our dreams bring us closer together? For example, in the ball of string exercise, there's a giant mess of blue string in between all of us that we entangled through our common dreams and solutions for the future, as both communities coming together. There really is a common thread in between these two very different communities. Our dreams unite us. Deep in the hearts of souls of people, we are more similar than different, whether which community you are from, whether your economic differences, or whether you are a parent or a child. Our dreams pull us closer together rather than push us apart. We all want something better for the future, and we come together on a day like today to discuss among our communities our ideas, our knowledge, and our dreams. Thank you. Thank you.